Hey everyone, it's me, Lisa. I am so, so excited to see you guys or for you guys to see me. Um, so I wanted to do this video so I could tell you guys what my experience was like when I went to Guyana. I know a lot of you guys donated money um, towards my trip. I'm so appreciative of that. For those of you who don't know me, I was basically born and raised in church. And um, I was born in Guyana, which is a pretty interesting thing. Um, at the age of seven, my parents, we migrated to America. And at about 12 or 13 years old, I decided that I would give my life to Christ. So I got saved and baptized. And from there, my life pretty much went uphill. I was basically very obedient to God, very submissive. And, um, you know, he's been protecting me. There were times I was very blind and very naive, but I can honestly say that God has always, always been looking out for me. When I'm sleeping, he's not. The Bible says he does not slumber and he does not sleep. And, and I can honestly say that God doesn't slumber and he does not sleep. So he's always, always been looking out for me. But, um, so growing up in the church, I've always thought that missions were for like people who want to go live in the desert somewhere. And I always looked at them as like really, really boring people. And I was like, I'm not a missionary. That's not for me. That's not my calling. And I was always broke. So I was never giving to missions or to any of the missionaries that came to our church. But long story short, there was a point in my life, I think I was about 24 years old when I decided that I wanted nothing to do with church. I wanted to just, you know, I can serve God outside of church. And so, um, not too long after that, God called me to the church. We're fellowshipping right now, and um, while I was there, um, before I even got there, I just had this longing and this desire to reconnect with where I came from. I feel like growing up in New York City, I was always surrounded by a lot of different cultures. Um, I had a, a really good appreciation for other people's culture, but somewhere along the line I lost who I was and where I came from. And so in a desperate, desperate attempt to reconnect back with where I came from, I tried to get everybody and their mother to go to Guyana with me from like the guy I was dating to my mom, my sister, and everyone is like, oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna go next year, we're gonna go next year, and no one ever goes, and no one plans anything, and I didn't wanna go by myself. So, um, lo and behold, I was sitting in church one day, random Sunday, I was just sitting there, and I felt God saying to me, you know, you wanna go back to Guyana so bad, why not go back for me? And so, that it hit me that, oh, I can go back for you but how like how can I give back and then I'm like wait duh church goes on missions to Guyana all the time I just need to get connected with the missions team and go out there with them so um, I got connected with our missions pastor pastor Park and um, interview with him talk to him about you know what I was feeling why I wanted to go and where I thought God could use me and you know he definitely was being led by the Spirit of God when he made certain decisions in terms of you know what's gonna happen on our trip and who's gonna be doing what and um, we went on the trip and it was amazing um, while on the trip I was able to connect with a lot of people that otherwise I may not have been able to connect with um, if I didn't go on that missions trip and I can definitely say I learned a lot about myself on this trip and I also learned a lot about people and, and you know society and how we function as human beings and one of the things that God dealt with me on on this trip was you know um, be confident in who he's called me to be be confident in what he's given me right now you know don't be confident in the things that you're working towards be confident in the gifts that he has placed in you now be confident in where he's placed you now and be confident in 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 what he's called you to do at this specific time don't um, be timid about anything don't be shy don't hold back for don't hold back for yourself and don't hold back for anyone else so those are just the small things that I've learned and it, it really goes deeper than what I'm saying now but if you see me in the street or maybe at church or something then we can talk a little bit more about that but that's all I'm gonna say about that for now but while I was in Guyana we did um, serve at an orphanage and this orphanage is for children who are really underprivileged um, they come from all kinds of different backgrounds and and they've unfortunately have to do have had to deal with unfortunate situations in their life and um, with the help of the 
the mother and father of this orphanage they're able to kind of um, get the things that they need you know an education they get to learn about Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior um, they learn the routine the basic principles of Christianity and they're they have these parents that are there to guide them to show them how to live this way and, and how to live right before God and so our job was basically to just go down there and it wasn't really a job it's more like a ministry and a calling to just go down there and love on them and, and show them God's love in, in little things that we do um, one thing that we always um, did while we were down there is pray um, as a team and you know ask God to show us different ways that we can love these children and and a lot of times it may be in a capacity that we actually came to serve it and, and a lot of times it can be you know outside of what we actually came to do and I'll give you one example every day while we were down there we did vacation Bible school with the kids we sang um, they learned Bible stories and we discussed topics and then we also played games um, while in a church setting for vacation Bible school and we also in addition to the vacation Bible school had other activities um, that were available for the kids we had a carnival for the kids we had a birthday party for all of the kids. Um, we had a singing club, we had a dance club, which I led and it was so much fun, which is one of the areas that God was able to use me in. Um, we had a knitting and crocheting club and we also had small groups where we were able to sit with the kids and just talk to them one-on-one -on -one and help them kind of hash out any issues that they may be having and just loving on them and making them feel pretty comfortable. There are two, 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 out of many stories that I want to share with you guys that really blessed me on the trip. So one of them is, I, I kind of titled it like Full Circle because as you guys know I was born in Guyana and so as we were coming in the plane, like it didn't really hit me that I was going to Guyana until I came out of the airport and got into the minibus. So I hadn't been to Guyana in about eight or nine years. So um, while we were coming over and I looked down into the, the water, the muddy water, and the plane was coming over, um, I just felt like God say full circle. I'm just like, full circle? What is that supposed to mean? And then as I was there for the few days, it was such a blessing to know that God is like really, really intentional with everything that he does from the beginning to the end. And I say, I heard full circle, but when I got there, those last days, those those first couple days God started to open my eyes to where I was and who I was really connected to and and the full circle came from one me being born in Guyana and two being saved and and trusting and believing in God and spreading that gospel which is something that he called us to do being able to go back to where I was coming from to spread that gospel and to let people know about the love and the peace of Jesus Christ also fit it into that circle and then the thing that absolutely blew my mind was that I didn't know exactly where I was going but I was very open to um, you know where whatever God wanted me to do and, and who he wanted me to connect with and so when I got there I realized that the woman who ran the orphanage was actually very connected to my family um, her sister was my Sunday school teacher um, over here in Brooklyn New York and her dad founded the church that I was born into in Guyana so all of that stuff came together and it was like so so overwhelming and then in addition to that um, we did vacation Bible school off-site one day at a church in town in Georgetown and um, the church that we did the vacation Bible school and when we got in there and I sat there for a few minutes for a few minutes it felt very very familiar there was something very familiar about just sitting there and looking out um, into the congregation and then it hit me and afterwards of course I kind of confirmed with my mom if this was true that I had actually went to that church when I was a little girl that our church would actually travel to um, to Georgetown to go to that specific church because they would always have these crusades and so a lot of the revivals that we went to happened in that very building so that was mind-blowing that overwhelmed me and it left me with a lot of questions as to you know why would God you know call me back here and like why would he do it now like what is what is the bigger picture in all of this what's the the like what's his intention what's his big purpose in all of this and I feel like the, the feeling of fulfillment that I got while I was there 
was amazing. It was just like I knew God wanted me to be there and what what I really appreciate about it is that even though at this point I can't completely connect everything, I, I can still see his hand in so many different places and it's all connecting. And the lessons that I learned while on this trip are helping me live a better life here in New York. So I'll give you an example. Um, I met a, a little boy who didn't know how to jump rope and I was I was turning for him and as I'm turning for him he cannot jump y'all he can't jump he can't even do one jump and every time we turn and he doesn't jump he jumps and like it stops he's like oh come let's go again let's go again and I'm like okay and I'm turning and I'm feeling so bad for him because he has such a tender heart and he is so sweet and he refused to give up and as I'm turning and I'm standing here and he's he can't jump I'm like, God, I wish there was some, there's a way I could help him to jump because he has such a strong, strong desire to jump. And so, I don't, God just gave me this thing. He was like, tell him, don't jump until he feels the rope behind him. So, I told him that and as he jumped, he actually jumped, he did like five jumps. And so, when I realized that that was working for him, I was like, oh my God, I was screaming. I was like, oh my God, you're jumping, you're jumping, oh my God, you're jumping, you're jumping. He was jumping while he's jumping I'm like turning and I'm trying to keep up with his pace because he's excited we're excited so I have to like turn so he can jump longer keep up with his pace and so when I got back to New York and I was reflecting and I was journaling about that particular incident and how it was a blessing to to see him that he, one he didn't give up and two that he actually jumped not only did he not give up but he was able to accomplish what he he set out to accomplish it and God reminded me that there, there are areas in my life, there are things in my life that I wanted to do before I left, before I left for the mission trip. And um, it may or may not have disappointed me, but throughout this year, throughout let's say September to December, I really had like a tough time, I was really struggling and God just kept sending these messages to me, don't give up, don't give up through many different, different people. And I never gave up and I still feel like I didn't accomplish what I was supposed to. And so now that I'm back from the missions trip, God is like, don't worry about what you thought should have been yours or what you thought you should have done or should not have done or, or what should have been given to you. Because he says, you may not think that you're where you should be, but I'm going to send someone who's going to give you what you need, someone who's going to... Um, give you exactly what you need to take you to where you think you belong or to take you where I've already destined for you to belong and, and he used that story to show me that he's like the same way you had this heart for this little kid that you really really wanted him to be able to jump is the same heart that he has for me that the things and the dreams and the visions that he's given me he wants me to accomplish them and even though I feel inadequate he is able to send the right person to say the right thing to me, you know, at the right time to get me to where he wants me to go. And, and I should just rest in the fact that he has a perfect plan for me and he has a per perfect plan for you, for all of us. And if we, if we don't give up, if we don't become weak and we don't become faint, God is going to send the right person to us that we need to take us where we need to go and to get where we need to be and to do the things that he's called us to do so with that being said i hope you guys are encouraged by that i just want to let you know that your seed your donation if that's what you sowed into um and those are just ways that i was blessed on that trip there were a lot of other ways that that the children themselves were blessed they were encouraged to you know continue to do the things that god has called them to do they were encouraged to go further with their studies to you know find gainful employment um they were encouraged to seek god they were encouraged and taught that god is their perfect father and he provides for them he takes care of them he listens to them and so those are some of the lessons that they learned and the way they impact their lives now i mean we can't we can't tell you how it's going to impact their lives but we know that it's going to impact their lives like the, the word of god never ever returns void and in the time when they need it the most the words that we taught them while they were there it's going to come up it's going to god is going to speak to them whether in visions or dreams or in a still small voice god is going to remind them of his goodness and that he's he is their father and that he will provide for them 
And once again, this could not have been possible without your donations. So I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank God for providing the money to you. I want to thank you for not hardening your hearts and not withholding, um, but sowing into this ministry and sowing into me as a person because, you know, you never know who you're giving your money to. You're giving your money, but you're giving my faith. But I just want to say, you guys, you, you were really helpful. I'm so overwhelmed. Um, my mom, my mom kept coming home with money and I'm just like, mommy, uh, I'm okay. I got it. We're done. We're good. People just kept sending money. People kept giving money online. Um, big shout out to, um, Brooklyn Tabernacle Church members. You guys poured out so much love for me. Like people pulled me in a corner. Here's like $15, here's $20, here's this, here's this. Thank you guys so much. I love you so much. Your generosity really, um, just restores the, the, the humanity inside of me because there are a lot of let me not even start preaching <laughs> your humanity really just um helped me to see that you know there are really good people out there you don't always run into good people even in a church you don't always run into people who are kind who are sincere who are giving and so i just want to thank you guys so much for showing me that love and and withholding nothing being really selfless with your giving um and everyone else who gave you know who you are i can't shout out everybody but thank you so 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 much i love you and even my pastors in guyana that were just like praying for me um the prayer band that were at church praying for me um my mom's prayer group that were praying for me um everyone that was basically praying for me and encouraging me and telling me you know how amazing we were gonna be out there thank you guys so so much i love you god bless you and thank you thank you thank you thank you